Hello guys, what's up? How are you doing? I hope you're doing great. Welcome back to my book club. So we're gonna continue on with the most helpful self-help books that you can enjoy and you can develop yourself with. So the book we have today is Stop Overthinking. So we're gonna go deep into this concept about overthinking. This book is by Nick Trenton. Okay, so we have big ideas today that we're gonna discuss. So let's get it started. So, big idea number one, thinking about something for too long often leads to distress. There are some symptoms of overthinking, which one, always being conscious of thoughts, inability to control thoughts, hating spontaneous thoughts and feeling that some thoughts are unwelcome. Thinking feels like a struggle between competing impulses, constantly questioning, doubting, analyzing or judging your thoughts. Seeing self and personal thoughts as the source of your problems when faced with setbacks. Focusing on understanding thoughts and digging into the inner workings of the mind. Having issues with decision making and doubts regarding choices made. Worrying and harboring concern about many things at once. Engaging in negative thoughts patterns. Thinking about uncontrollable past events. So these are the symptoms of overthinking. So if you have any kind of these, so you're overthinking, you're suffering from overthinking. Stick with me to know what is the solution for it. What is the cure of overthinking? So overthinking delays the decision-making process, thereby impeding progress. And Nick Trenton says, our daily habits can feed our anxieties and result in overthinking in subtle but significant ways. Begin number two, genetic predisposition plus stressful precipitating events equal overthinking. So when we talk about ourselves, one major intrinsic factor that brings about anxiety is genetics. Unfortunately, some people tend to be more anxious than others because of their genetic predisposition. The truth is that no single cause has been identified as the reason for anxiety. However, experts have discovered a genetic component. So, for instance, Purvis et al. argued in 2019 molecular psychiatry paper that chromosome 9 carries genes doesn't definitively mean you're struggling with anxiety. Most people are habitual overthinkers because it makes them feel they are solving a problem they are overthinking about. However, this is not true. As overthinking never stops, but we still enjoy it because we feel like we are progressing. This eventually turns into a vicious cycle that can be hard to escape. So people who overthink are more overwhelmed than others because they turn the normal stresses of life into complicated situations. Our environment. This major extrinsic vac factor that leads to anxiety has two aspects. And the first is our immediate environment, places like our homes and offices where we spend the most time. The way these places are composed can have a considerable impact on our anxiety levels. For example, if a place is noisy, not well illuminated and cluttered, we, feel, we will feel more anxious. The second aspect is the broader world which refers to the experiences we have in our social-cultural setting through interactions with others. For example, experiencing racism or sexism might make us stressed, resulting in heightened anxiety. The negative consequences of overthinking, such as physical, mental, and even social harms, can have long-term effects like muscle tension, depression, impatience, and irritability, with headaches, dizziness, etc. So there are four A's of stress management, how to manage stress. So these stress management techniques are avoid. Avoid things means walking away from something you can't control. Although it's not everything that deserves your attention, the best way to handle some things is to remove them from your environment. Number two, alter. If you can't avoid it, you need to learn a stressor. You can't avoid every stressful situation, so you have to look for ways to change them by determining how they unfold. Number three, accept. If you can't alter your environment, you must accept it. Number four, adapt. Lastly, if you get to the point where you have done everything and it's apparent that you can't do much about the situation at all, 
then you should learn how to adapt. This is where you change yourself to cope better with stress. So here is also you can use these techniques called the 54321 technique. What is it about? So this method helps us in overcoming panic attacks by involving all your five senses. So whenever you are becoming anxious, look for five things around you that you can see, four things you can touch, three that you can smell, two that you can hear, and one that you can taste. The goal of this technique is to distract your brain from overthinking. So to improve your mental health, draw boundaries around your relationship with people who tend to increase your stress level. And last idea here, learning to manage your time and energy reduces stress and helps you achieve your goals faster. This is definitely true, guys. So how can we do that? So first, you can manage your time by prioritizing your tasks according to your preference and making regular to-do lists. Here are some techniques you can adopt that can help in time management. Number one, Allen's input processing method. Inputs are external stimuli. This method analyzes and notes how you respond to the slightest stimuli, such as calls, emails, etc. Then you must plan for the best way to prioritize certain stimuli over others. Number two, setting smart goals. It stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound goals. Write down your goals in a specific way and put measures in place to determine if you have achieved them. Ensure the goals are not bizarre. Make them attainable and relevant to your value system. Lastly, set a time limit for completing the goals so that you can accomplish them at the appropriate time. Number three, time blocking. Allocating time to focus on a single task rather than multitasking. This will help you always to begin your day with your priorities. Nick Trenton says, time blocking can curb the perfectionist impulse and give you a more realistic idea of how long things actually take. So learning to control your thoughts, emotions, and body helps you gain mastery of your mind. And this is basically right, guys, because you just have to follow these techniques. So if you do these techniques, you're going to manage stress, you're going to lose anxiety. And just by cutting down these stuff and applying these techniques on yourself. And here we'll come to the end of this summary book. And lastly, as we always do, I'll leave you with this tab so you can try. So have a stress journal to record the time, date, and your current feelings. Rate your stress on a scale of 1 to 10 with one for not being stressed at all and 10 for being super stressed. Also, keep note of physical symptoms, stressful events, and anything else you perceive as stressful. Lastly, document how you responded to those events and their outcomes. This will help you know the origin of your stress and how to deal with it. Eliminate negative thoughts as soon as possible and replace them with positive thoughts and imagination. Choose to be in charge of how you spend your time and energy by setting your priorities right. Have a specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Break your goal into smaller pieces and use the time blocking technique to focus on acting on one at a time. Okay, guys, so I'm going to leave you with that. So thank you so much for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you so much. You have a great day. See you next time.